been coming in. This group had to learn from past experiences here against the team. Uh, <coughs> how did you see this unfold? And what's the level of, of disappointment the way around? I mean, it's really disappointing. You were down 19-17. And, um, you know, I don't think we're playing great, but uh, we just, uh, I thought we played awful. You know, give VCU a lot of credit. You know, their defense had a lot to do with it, but we didn't share the ball. We took bad shots. We made, we missed good shots. Uh, and, um, you know, a lot of our turnovers really weren't even the, the defense as much as just, you know, being undisciplined, holding the ball forever, and they come steal it and sloppy passing. Um, so, yeah, I, I'm, I'm very disappointed. Uh, I mean, they had a great atmosphere. It's a tough place to play, that's for sure. Um, but to be down 26 points and um, missing free throws, uh, we, we were a very uh, poor team defensively tonight and really in all all areas. About, you know, like Keith and going nine for nine from the line is probably about the only bright spot I could say that we had tonight. So it's the kind of place where when you come in here, having been here before, that you kind of have it in your head to never let it get to that part where the crowd's getting whipped up and the whole defense, because it's really hard to stop it once that starts. Yeah, I mean, you know, we 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 put in some rules, no behind and back dribbles, no certain things, uh, no spin moves, and then you know, the game comes and you know we played right into their hands. And um, you know, when they get a breakaway dunk or a layup, it uh, you know it gives the crowd a lot of life and energy, and um, you know it's intimidating. But um, I just thought we we lacked energy. You know, they took it from us, um, but we never really made a run to get back in it. And some guys that we had kind of been depending on off the bench, um, you know, had bad games too. So we just didn't have anybody to kind of pick it up and we needed somebody to kind of pick things up for us tonight. And the statistics sh show a lot of the story, uh, just really had no one, um, no one play well. And then um, defensively, that doesn't show up in the stats. And we had role players for VCU going by us and scoring. I mean, that was, uh, it wasn't their best players. It was guys that, you know, aren't really scorers for them. We're, we're really hurting us. Coach, going off of that, you came in talking about bringing out the water on the impact you have on games and then Terry Larry, yeah, I mean, you know, Wadnabi played pretty good D on him twice. He spun, and, and I thought he was out of control. He didn't do anything. He fouled him, like, and it was a foul. Like, I, I, you know, after the first time, they did it again, and one of them was a three point play. Um, so I, I don't know. You know, it's Utah's first experience here. He's our best free throw shooter. Even at the end, that was kind of the story of the game. He missed a layup and he gets a foul. I missed two in a row. Um, so um, you know, maybe that crowd had him shook a little bit, but uh, hopefully, we'll learn from it. You know, and, and bounce back. But um, you know, I didn't think our turnovers were sloppy. Uh, I thought we did a decent job against the press. We tried to avoid Weber, have other guys handle the ball. Um, but it's just really, um, you know, really sloppy. And I don't think they have really shot blockers. And you know, we we're missing layups in, inside. So, um, but you know, credit to them. Um, you know, guys, guys are just uh, were worried about somebody coming over, blocking shots, stripping you, whatever. Um, but, you know, I'm definitely disappointed. But like I said, you definitely got to give VCU all the credit in the world. Um, you know, I think they were ready to come home and just prove a point and blow somebody out. And uh, they did that to us tonight. Did you stay away from the 1 3 1 leader because of the troubleshooting? Uh, so you, you wouldn't have time to set up defensively? Well, you know, I try to go into it, and they do a good job. They screen it, and Wadnabi just got screened, and we get a wide open basket, a wide open three the first play. And, you know, John wasn't really scoring or rebounding. And then Yuta, I just kept going back to him, and you know we didn't really get anything out of either one. So in uh, man to man, they were torching our guards and driving by us. So not nothing really was you know was working um, you know today for us. That's for sure. Do you think they were able to wear you guys down a bit with you you guys going seven deep, and they can just they bring so many bodies, bringing you know three top one hundred <coughs> on the bench. You think that would factor in the second? Oh, definitely. I mean, I, I thought like Larry, Larry. I don't know how to pronounce his name. The kid's <laughs> no, fre freshman. He's a, uh, you know, he killed us. I mean, he's got 15 points, and you know, and, and usually Wadnabi's been good for eight to 11, 12. Uh, we didn't have that tonight. So yeah, th those guys come in, and you know, and and we we've been getting a lot out of Paul Jorgensen and, and Wadnabi, but you know, we didn't get anything out of our bench at all uh, tonight. So their depth really hurts us. And, you know, I mean, Larson's definitely tired. So when a guard, he's not a shot blocker to begin with, but when guards are driving in there, I'm looking at him, he's not even moving over and help. So, uh, um, you know, like I said, they really exposed us and uh, our team defense was poor, our individual defense was poor. And, and like I said, uh, you know, the, the crowd did a great job as well. Coach, what do you think was the issue with McDonald tonight? It seemed like he really couldn't get it going offensively. Well, you know, Joe's not the fastest guy in the world. Um, he, you know, he's not a penetrating guard. He's a tough, 
guard and he's a good, very good player. Um, but he can't really go by his man. So that's why we have to play Keith in a lot at point guard when we play against someone like, you know, like Weber. And um, but you know, like I said, we we we're not getting any assists. You know, if if you don't get in your offense and get assists, we're not going to beat anybody. You know, we. The last couple of games, our assists were up. You know, last game Keith and I had a record of eight assists, no turnovers. And then tonight, you know, our team only has three zero in the second half. He has none. You know, um, you know, and that's partly because of their pressure. But we we just didn't get into any kind of offense and didn't execute. And then when we did try to make a play, we just missed layups or open threes because we did get some open shots. And uh, you know, you know, even our big our big shoot better than our guards. And Kevin and John, you know, top of the key, they've been shooting pretty good. And neither one of them made a, you know, made a shot. Tonight, Keith, how would you describe what how it unfolded in the second half? I mean, you, got, you guys were in four early in the second half, and what, how would you describe what happened? Um, I think they got on transition a little bit more. We didn't handle their pressure as well. Um, like Coach said, um, turned into a little bit of a layup line, you know, dunks and stuff from our mistakes. So I just think um, second half we had to handle our, the pressure a little bit better, and we didn't. I think it was partly our shooting, and you know, two. I forgot about the beginning, of the second half. I thought we came out ready to play, did cut it to four, and could have cut it in more if we made all our free throws. And then, you know, it's simple one on one, they would just go right by some of our best players. I just thought we weren't committed to playing team defense, and you know, some of our guys when we're not scoring, it really affects our defense in a negative way. And we've talked about that all year, and um, you know, we've got to figure out a way to change that. But um, I thought we were definitely focused in. Um, First minutes of the second half and the offensive end, but not a, you know, not on a defensive end. Were you expecting 47 rebounds from them, or was that just a product of having a tough shooting night? Um, no, I mean we're we're usually I think we're number one league or plus five, and I don't know if they're even or plus one. I mean that's an area I thought was a key to the game, but I just think that was a lot of effort in us not boxing out and. Um, you know, we, they just manhandled us, uh, you know, on the glass, and, and we stood around a lot. Uh, like I said, you know, Kevin was trying to rebound, but um, you know, we we don't really get many rebounds out of certain positions, and um, that I give them credit. I mean, I didn't expect us to get out rebounded by 11 in the second half. I think it was worse than in the first half. Anything else? Um, is Utah feeling one hundred percent yet, or is his ankle still bothering him? I I don't know. I, I think his ankle is fine. I mean, I think he he. I've told him after the game he hasn't played well since he hurt his ankle at Fordham, but he's got to you know tough and get tougher and um, suck it up. You know what I mean? This is uh, we're starting to play some really tough teams in our league, and we need him. Um, and you know he wasn't real effective uh, our last game, um, and we didn't need him to be. We we're up 36 points in the second half, but tonight we really needed him. Um, you know, and you don't want to have to depend on a freshman that much. But you know, he he was uh, you know he had his worst game of the year, unfortunately. But you know what, he feels bad about it, and that's what I like about him. You know, he's got tears in his eyes in the locker room, and it shows me he cares, and that's the way it should be. So, I'm pretty confident that Udo will bounce back. We'll be off tomorrow. I'm sure his ankle will be fine. Um, but I just think for him, you know, we've played in some tough environments, but nothing like this. And you know, they got a good coach, and they scout him out, and he's not getting open threes, and he you know he's trying to dribble and do some things he's not capable of doing against their 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 team. And um, so hopefully it'll be a learning experience for him. And um, you know, like I said, I feel, I feel bad for him, but uh, you know, missing the free throws in the lab that's really uncharacteristic of him. Coach, can you see the progression in Ollie Cox from last year to this year? Yeah, I mean he's he's strong and, and truthfully he gets to play more. You know, uh, uh, they need him more, uh, and he's just when he gets it inside on an offensive rebound or whatever, you can't really strip him. He's so darn strong and he's athletic. Um, so that's a tough uh, a tough combination, and, and we don't have. I mean, he's put up huge numbers, ten and eight in twenty two minutes, and um, we don't really have a power forward like that. That that's that that kind of strength. Um, so we were worried about him, and, and he definitely hurt us. Uh, you know, hurt us a lot. Anything else? Thank you. Was the plan going into the game to really try to slow down possessions with a lot of passing? No, the plan was to try to uh, score in transition against their press. We felt we had good enough ball hands to try to score when it was there and really get our defense set and make them play in the half court. And um, um, and I thought we did get them play in the half court, but I didn't think that we would get beat off the dribble so easy by wing players. And so, um, you know, it just. Uh, Nothing really worked work tonight. All right, thank you. <coughs>